to the last day of our volunteer training program. Today's topic is palliative care in community. To understand the role of community in palliative care in different settings, how to initiate community support, different types of community support, to understand the scope and advantages of community volunteers involvement in palliative care. These would be enlightened to us by Mr. Babu Abraham. Mr. Babu Abraham, who is associated with Pallium India from 2012, presently heading the social engagement department, also actively involved in many NGOs and presently bearing offices of President Kerala Association of Professional Social Workers, Trivandrum Chapter, and Joint Secretary, Kerala Association of Social Workers. He has presented various papers related to palliative care and social works across many organizations. He has coordinated multitude of activities, including CSR projects. Hearty welcome, dear Babu, and over to you now. Thank you, ma'am, for the nice introduction. Today, we are going to see the uh, role of community or the community volunteers or a role in palliative care setting. Most of my presentation is based on Kerala uh, background, especially how the, we are just trying to uh, show the model, community-based palliative care model in Kerala. That's why I'm just, uh, many times I'll be mentioning about the Kerala, Kerala model, the Kerala model palliative care like that, uh, to get more understanding about the model palliative care system in Kerala background. Okay, the hallmark of palliative care movement in Kerala is the participation of community. The reason behind this statement by Dr. Richard Smith, editor of BMT Opinion, said in 2012, because the Kerala model palliative care is known as the community-based palliative care system. The Kerala model does provide a feasible achieving vision of palliative care covering all patients, all settings, and all dimensions. As a response to a request from Pallium India, the government of Kerala recognized the need and formed a palliative care policy in 2008 and revised in it in 2019. The policy lays mainly emphasis on the government system working in close collaboration with civil society organizations, especially uh, the civil society organizations are from the community and for the community, like that is known as the link centers of Pallium India or Pallium Care. They uh, act as a uh, link between the care providers and care reservists, like that it is the community-based organizations. Especially the principles is that the community around an ailing person must take the responsibility for that person's well-being. Only by such involvement can the social determinants of health be adequately addressed. That's why we are just demonstrating the community involvement in palliative care system. Before seeing all the aspects, all the concept, all the involvement, or the role of volunteers, we have been seeing many concepts about palliative care, and we have got the or we have learned many things about palliative care. Here I am going to give a small case scenario, and you are you'll be divided in four groups, and you will be discussing aspects of different aspects of uh, social, physical, spiritual, and psychological needs of this particular beneficiary, and uh, you will be presenting what will be your role in palliative care setting. After that, we will be seeing different, uh, the, the addition to this, we will be seeing different aspects of palliative care system. A 50 years old lady 
Ms. A has been diagnosed with a smooth breast in 2016. She had undergone breast removal surgery, referred for pain management, and she looked very anxious and had no idea about pregnancy care. She is a widow and her children are having a hostile relationship with her and she lives alone in the rented house. In this scenario, how a volunteer is, or the, how the volunteer will be responding to the, her needs or what will be her role? We are going to discuss this in your group. Once again, I will be uh, sharing this uh, uh, scenario that is the, a breast uh, cancer patient or a lady. She is living alone. She has, uh, she is having uh, many needs in the, in her, uh, in relation to her uh, disease and her psych psychosocial situations. Radhalashmi, can you do that? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, so I just want to say like we are going to uh, split all the entire week. So we have around 41 participants. We are dividing into four groups. So, so there will be around seven to eight participants in each group. So in each group, once you are there, make sure that your video and audio is on and you will directly start the discussions. We'll be giving eight minutes for uh, the entire discussion for the scenario. Uh, once in the group, make sure you identify a leader. A leader can note down all the points discussed by every participant and summarize the entire uh, discussions once the uh, breakout room is closed. So these are the general rules. Make sure you uh, discuss throughout the uh, eight minutes and come up with whatever you as a volunteer can do for uh, this uh, Mrs. A, 56 year old lady. So try to address like uh, Babu sir said, try to address her uh, physical, social, spiritual and psychological needs. Uh, is there any doubts regarding it? You will be given eight minutes. It will work on timer. So after eight minutes, the room will be directly closed and we'll be back to the entire uh, participants group. The means room. The three different uh, groups will be presenting their points to the uh, hall group now. Who is going to present that first? First one or second one, third one or fourth one? Who are the... Can people hear me where I am? Yes, 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 Father. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we discuss in our group the uh, first thing we have to do, uh, knowing the history, uh, her age and loneliness, living in a rented building, nobody beside her. So making assessment, what are, what are her needs? Needs are, of course, she is sick and she needs medical care, somebody to give her injections, whatever, intramuscular, intravenous, whenever she needed, should be there. And uh, she's lonely, she needs company, somebody to sit, give some time. If not the, uh, the whole day, but sometimes we can two, three, four people, whatever, one, one, one by one can give her some company. And then she's living lonely, she might not be able to prepare her own food. When you visit her, take something, something for her to eat. And we talk about uh, spiritual needs. At the, the time when she knows that uh, uh, these are the last phase of her life on earth. I mean, uh, she needs some spiritual support and uh, psycho, psychological support and financial needs because she has to pay rent and she has to... May, pain, physical pain is there, but there are many kinds of pain we discussed the other day that she has psychological disturbance in her mind that gives her a headache and uh, a financial problem. So we have to address all her needs. That should will be a, comp a, a comprehensive palliative care, making assessment and do accordingly. Yeah, next, whoever wants to come. Thank, Thank you, you. Yeah. Okay, so our group, um, our group had a very similar answer, really, that we would start with the, um, start with an assessment, um, trying to find out what she really needs. Um, and the point was made that really that would start with listening to her and um, really seeking from her what, what in her perception does she need? Um, and then 
go from there really and until we'd spoken to her and done this assessment we didn't feel confident to make any other plans at this point we just wanted to first understand from her what her needs were and that uh, would start with listening uh, my group does that sum up broadly speaking what we said you happy with that yeah, anyone yeah. want to add good. anything good All right. okay. the next group Evening. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Charmi, and I'll be presenting summary from Breakup Room 2. So we started with uh, discussing physical needs. So first of all, we, we all will go through her case properly. Then only we'll start working with her. So in physical need, we'll do something for pain management. We'll also uh, explain her how to maintain regular cleaning, hygiene, and everything, how to wear clean and wash clothes. And we'll also make sure that all the necessary things like medicines, water, and uh, first aid kit, everything is there in her uh, in her room so that she can uh, use uh, uh, them, them by herself only. Uh, and physical need also be discussed that will explain her some basic exercise uh, which she can do it by, uh, by herself. In social and psychological need, we'll listen to her patiently. And uh, we also discuss to support her by uh, by providing her any vocational training, uh, vocational program, vocational training, so that she can earn by herself and uh, manage her living. And in spiritual, we discuss that uh, we can take her for some uh, nature walk or kind of thing so that she can connect herself with nature. So yeah, that's all from our side. If anything wants to add something, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The last group. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Vanda. I'm going to summarize uh, uh, the discussion from group four, group number four. So first of all, we have to listen her. After listening to her, we can assess her. Because after listening, we can come, uh, connect emotionally to her. All, all is 50% um, she, she want emotional support. From my, from my side, 50% uh, she want small emotional support to, uh, because after uh, breast surgery, the lady will go in the depression. So because of her, uh, because of her physical appearance. So we have to work, uh, work on her physical appearance. Physical needs, she needs pain management. For that, we can give um, some medicines. Or along with that, she needs rehabilitation. That includes physical therapy, occupational therapy, stress management. We, we can give her some techniques to get out, uh, out of stress. Like we can give some spiritual books to read. Spiritual songs, we can give, her, give it to her. So in physical needs, she or uh, uh, apart from it, uh, she needs emotional support uh, uh, as she's, uh, you know, uh, living in a rented house. So she needs some emotional support also. And we can work on her relationships with her children also. There are, um, yeah. yeah, we can strengthen her relationship with her children. And of course, um, we'll work on her psychosocial needs also. She needs psychological support. She needs psychological counseling. We can give it to her. Um, that, that is all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all the groups presented in a well manner. But uh, some, if something is missing in your thoughts or your presentations. I think involving other people. The, yeah, the, the, the community involvement you are missing. Yeah. Networking with the other NGOs and uh, hospice care and all. Yes, yes. And uh, connecting that particular beneficiary with other supporting groups or supporting system that is also missing. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll be seeing the details about the what is the role of a volunteer or how the community is involved in this palliative care activities. Uh, shall I continue with my presentation? Yes, sir. Thank you. Before going to see what is the role of a community or the what are the roles of uh, palliative care volunteers in these settings, we need to understand some uh, the, the evolution of 
concept of palliative care uh, in the world. The evolution of palliative care concepts is from the hospice movement that started in 19th century by the Irish sister of charity, Mother Mary Ecker. She has started the first hospice in the world. Hospice, if anyone is not familiar with the word hospice, can anyone tell about what is hospice? No, not knowing. Not knowing. Okay, fine. Any other people? Terminal ill care. Terminal yeah, ill term care. Yeah, terminal ill care. Like the, uh, where people are getting care or where, where people are getting enough care at the end of their life. That is in a, uh, that is called, sometimes called as a institutionalized care. They will be admitting in that center. They will be getting all the care and they will be uh, getting a satisfactory care from that institution. Many people will be there to care them. And uh, after a few days or a few months, they'll be going back. Oh, they'll be, uh, their life will be come to an end. That is the evolution of concept as a palliative care, as a hospice moment. But it has a different uh, manner or, or the uh, different dimension has given by Dam Cicely Saunders. Cicely Saunders is known as the palliative care uh, for, or the palliative care introducer of the uh, to the world like that she is she is known as the father of palliative care in the world she has also started a, a hospice that is called saint christopher's hospice in london where many people especially uh, many part of the uh, world many people came and uh, or come and get more knowledge about palliative care and hospice and it's all like she has introduced the total care concept to, to the world. Like the patient has a physical oh, problems, social problem, psychological problem and spiritual aspects. Then she has introduced this concept and, and give a, a different opinion for palliative care activities or a different initiative for palliative care need. When it comes to India, the pioneer of palliative care in India is Dr. Mar Rajagopal, the chairman of Pallium India. He has introduced this palliative concept to uh, Indian community in 1993, as it is officially introduced by him in 1993 when he was the uh, head of the Department of Anesthesia in Calicut Medical College. Sometimes the Kerala model palliative care is known as the Calicut model palliative care, where the existing system of, of a government, system, uh, government uh, environment, they have started the palliative care OP at uh, uh, Calicut Medical College. And when it comes to the Pallium India, Pallium India has its own social engagement team, where we give different, or, or where we give different aspects of the, where we give more uh, concentration on uh, uh, engagement of community. Like we'll be having, uh, we'll be starting uh, the uh, palliative care movement by the sensitization program in the community. Then we will be identifying the different uh, volunteer people from that particular community. We'll be giving training to that particular group, then they will be uh, leading that uh, activities of palliative care in that community. Like that, we uh, have, we are we just engaging many uh, people for palliative care engagement. Then the emotional support, whenever and wherever it needs, the volunteers or the social workers are visiting their family. Listen, as you said earlier in your presentations, we are just listening to them. We or we are part of their family. Like that, we are uh, giving a lot of uh, emotional support to the uh, family. Then social and financial support. Like 
whenever or wherever needs like uh, if a person is living with some sort of serial health and right and suffering he needs some financial support or social support where he lose due to this disease or due to his physical conditions we are just trying to re establish or uh, trying to assess their problems or trying to connect with that family or uh, that particular person with that community and giving some sort of support like uh, the food support are there transportation facilities are there already we have seen all these things in our psychosocial care uh, on the third day of this volunteer training program then we takes care of the family welfare where we are caring not only the patients but also the the family members especially the care primary care giver they are also having lot of troubles or lot of emotional needs that we will be uh, taking care of through our uh, engagement of volunteers uh, the, uh, and the engagement of our different communities for this care support here we are going to see the, the compassionate community compassionate community care is aimed at empowering neighbor to create a clean culture of caring for needy fellow beings like including these type of uh, principles like compassion compassion means everyone has the right to be treated with the dignity respect and equality that is the major principles which makes the community uh, to work with the with the uh, or for the that particular family then the community everyone has the right to information education support to assist them in finding answers getting assistance and making informed decision that respect individual beliefs values and their needs that is the involvement of community in that particular activity or particular uh, care system then the principle of care everyone has the right to receive the right care when and where they need the person is a physical psychological spiritual and social being as said or, or we we have seen that in our uh, the definition given by the world health organization uh for health like a person's complete well being is the aim of the the healthcare profession or healthcare system then here we can see the difference or the gap in between the micro and micro uh, macro uh, divisions like macro is the care providing system or the care providing uh, the agency but the micro level or micro is the uh, individual family when they visit the hospital they will be getting some support of uh, support for their uh, health related issues but if they do not get back to that particular care system or care uh, providers they won't be uh, or it won't be addressed so if there is any problem other than the uh, the physical problems it won't be addressed but when we involve the emiso element like when we involve the social capital system in the uh, palliative care system or any health system the, there we can provide care in their home itself and we can provide a training for the family members and the, then the patient is getting care in their family situation itself this makes uh, a, a different uh, approach for palliative care or the health system what is community based palliative care we can see uh, in detail about the community based palliative care community links they will be identifying the patients or the beneficiaries from their community they will be identifying their needs after the identification of that particular beneficiary or the family or their needs they will be trying to fulfill their needs community en energize their life by like uh, uh, making some sort of changes through the different interventions made by 
the community or the community uh, volunteers. And the, through all these aspects, they will be giving care. So the community-based palliative care is known as uh, the, the life care. Initiation of a community-based palliative care for people. There are different aspects like the, the main background of this community-based palliative care is the patient in serious health threat suffering required continuous care and attention. That's why we are just concentrating more involvement of uh, community in this scenario. They need, they are in need of regular social, psychological, and spiritual, in addition to medical nursing care. They are having a lot of issues. When we visit that family, or when they visit a, or a care system or a hospital, they, the hospital management or anyone, nobody is able to understand their situation. When it, when they, a particular beneficiary is connected to a community services or community system, they will be getting or they will be, uh, uh, their psychological and social, spiritual aspects will be taken care of by understanding their life situation, their family system, their family board and everything. So that we will be concentrating more on the, the home-based care. Care should be readily accessible and available as close to their home as early as possible. Like that, they will be getting care. Or when a uh, professional home care services is provided, after all this uh, period, the community volunteers are continuously following up with the family. If there is any changes, or if they have any other troubles with their medications, or do they have any uh, like uh, any uh, social needs like that they will be the when we connect this family with the community they will be all these aspects will be addressed then the requirement of social capital will be uh, cre creating uh, a community with social responsibility like we'll be connecting this particular family with a, a, a community around them with their neighbors, with their uh, relatives, and they will be getting uh, uh, the proper care. They will be uh, their problems will be addressed in a, in a quick manner. The objectives of community-based palliative care or CBPC is community-based palliative care is aimed at creating a network of patients. Like we are just when we approach a community. The community uh, volunteers will be identifying the patients in their community and connecting that patients in, in that community with the, the care providers or the, the patients in and around that community. The family members are connected or neighbors are connected, colleagues and friends to help to reduce the physical and mental, social, spiritual suffering of the patients and their immediate family. Also create a awareness in the society about total care and compassion. These are the pictures where the patients get community support or the, the first one, the, they are trying to create a uh, awareness about palliative care in the community and to uh, mobilize more volunteers for these activities. Second one is a social visit by a volunteer, a social worker. Then the third picture is uh, clearly uh, showing the, the involvement of uh, community in palliative care. Then we are going to see who is a volunteer. A person who actively takes on a task, responsibility or project on his or her own accord with, without pay, being paid. Here also we can see different aspects of volunteerism or volunteer uh, involvement in palliative care. During this pandemic situation, many of our volunteers are involving in medicine distribution, food kit distribution, and uh, in many ways, like the, the, the first picture shows that uh, he's uh, trying to distribute the uh, medications, which we, uh, the, the home care team, uh, ask the volunteer to distribute to that particular beneficiary. Then the second picture shows the, 
the beneficiary's home is uh, some sort of trouble with that their home just they are trying to cover their home or the, their house with a, a tarpaulin or a sheet a plastic sheet then the, the volunteers are carrying the food kit to the particular beneficiary's family when we go for home care system or home care uh, services the volunteers are leading as to that uh, volunteers are leading us to that particular family or particular beneficiary they will be taking care of all the uh, social system or social needs of that particular family core responsibilities of a volunteer like keep the patient and the family at the center of activities here also we can see the 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 common volunteers involvement in a patient's life when uh, the patient is already you have seen this picture in the psychosocial care uh, presented by some of our volunteer or some of our social workers they are uh, fulfilling their needs at the end of their life like that conform to the mission and values of larger group treat everyone with the respect mindful of individual and group sensitivities then collaboration we are collaborating with many ngos in our society for providing a better care for the family and for the beneficiaries like already i have told that we will be connecting the family or the beneficiaries with their social support system in and around their family who will be able to support that family who will be able to provide care to that family we will be identifying or oh, whenever we create a community based center we will be mapping different support system in and around that, that particular center that collaborations working together to achieve a well defined common purpose to merge ideas expertise or to improve the productivity productivity means we are just giving a, a, a supportive care to the family in 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 all aspects the role of volunteers in palliative care or, or the role of, role of volunteers already you have shared your views about what you are supposed to do what you are going to do in your community like in patient care already i have mentioned that follow up with professional home care linking with the professional team or they will be providing some sort of basic nursing care like the basic cleanliness of cleanliness of the beneficiary or for their family like bathing support or the activities of support for the activities of daily living like that the the volunteers are involved in. then the emotional support already i have mentioned that you will be a listener you will be a listener or you will be a supporter or you will be there for that particular family like that you will be accompanying in their suffering or you will be accompanying their lifetime in their suffering as the, and when they need some emotional support the social support system social support by the way of food already you have seen that some of our volunteers are carrying food kit to the families they will be assessing their need or food need uh, whenever or wherever wherever they are need then education support already I, you have seen that we will be providing with the support of our volunteers we will be providing the education support of uh, uh, the beneficiaries children or grandchildren of the particular beneficiaries the education support means we are not only giving some sort of financial support the volunteers are giving some sort of mentoring they will be continuously follow up with their education uh, with the with uh, a good relationship making a good relationship with the educational institutions and do continuous follow up with uh, their uh, the education support in all means they the education team we will be, we'll be having different uh, groups which takes care of different rehabilitation activities they will be having a, uh, a food kit uh, 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 volunteers group then we will be having a education support volunteer group then some sort of uh, transportation facilities like ambulance services for their consultation or hospital admission 
on whenever and wherever, wherever they need some sort of transportation facility, whether the uh, community volunteers are giving or uh, sometimes they will be arranging or something, they will be taking the patients in uh, their own vehicles to the, for further consultation or further admission like that. Link with the support groups, already I have mentioned that we will be having enough community resources in and around our community or society. We need to identify all the support system, like those who are able to support with some sort of financial support, we will be identifying and connecting that uh, support system with the particular beneficiaries in the community, or sometimes if there is any support system for the rehabilitation facilities, we'll be connecting this family or beneficiaries with that uh, uh, support system. Then different types of uh, rehabilitation. That is also taken care by our volunteer team. Rehabilitation, especially with the, the house modification or house maintenance, uh, some sort of uh, that the transportation means or uh, some sort of uh, physical aid support, especially the, the, the volunteers are taking care of the vocational rehabilitation of uh, that family. Through that vocational rehabilitation, they uh, they are trying to engage the family and to uh, to avoid some some sort of suicidal thought or some sort of engagement will be happening to, through that uh, that uh, uh, vocational rehabilitation and they will be getting some financial support through that vocational rehabilitation like the, they will, will be supporting uh, the uh, rehabilitation or vocational rehabilitation of the family with the their consent or their situation or their expertise. We are not imposing a, a system or vocational rehabilitation to a particular family, but we will be making them or just based on their expertise, we will be providing the vocational rehabilitation. Training of family members, how to take care of the, the patient and their, uh, especially the caregivers, the primary caregivers, uh, self-care and those things. A resource mobilization that will be see, see uh, uh, in another uh, point. Advocacy, especially the raise voice for patients, they raise voice for patients' rights, speaks for them, or uh, in in front of the government system or the public, they will be uh, speaking or they will be uh, they will be the voice for this particular beneficiary. Spreading the message of palliative care. Whenever we get a chance to speak about palliative care, just utilize that. Whenever we get a uh, chance to share the thoughts of palliative care in your community, in your family, just do that. That will be uh, through this way, we can uh, spread the message of palliative care among your community. Then community awareness will be the volunteers are conducting or identifying different platforms and different support group. And they will be, the, the volunteers are providing uh, the, the community awareness about palliative care. The fundraising activities, the, especially in our uh, Pallium India, the volunteers are uh, doing different fundraising activities. Like they will be conducting food festival. Sometimes they will be conducting some art festival, like painting exhibitions, Craft, craft exhibitions and whenever wherever the necessary uh, when when uh, the necessary uh, or the necessity come they will be raising fund uh, from the community whenever they uh, whenever they celebrate or whenever they they do celebrate some uh, celebration in their family they will be keeping something for palliative care needs or palliative care activities like uh, the concept called share to care. Through that share to care concept, they will be keeping something or uh, some money for the benefit of uh, the people in the community. The assistance in all clerical or office work, they will be supporting the uh, particular organizations for documentation of the uh, work, or they will be uh, doing some sort of social audits especially we have uh, different committees or, or volunteers to do the social audit of patient care, fundraising, education support, 
uh, the pharmacy auditing, uh, the patient care activities, they will be doing, uh, especially the financial audit uh, through uh, the, the, their social uh, uh, audits. They will be uh, verifying the uh, expenses made by the organization, giving suggestion to the organization like that. We will be, we have formed different committees for that particular activities. Then at last, identifying the areas wherever you can contribute. You can contribute your time, you can contribute your wealth or the resources. You can, uh, you can be there as a, as a volunteer in, in many uh, man. There are different concepts like uh, the, the uh, especially we when we uh, do some formation of uh, the community for palliative care, we'll be using different uh, the concepts like NNPC. The the, uh, the full form of NNPC is neighborhood network in palliative care. Just creating a, uh, a a neighborhood system for the betterment of that particular beneficiary or particular family. Through that concept, we will be creating awareness about palliative care, creating uh, uh, different groups of uh, for palliative care activities like, like that. Through that, this uh, compassionate community care, that is also a concept we uh, have taken that concept from uh, the, the, the American system and we have tried, tried to implement that particular concept in our system uh, by engaging different religious groups especially uh, the, the uh, residence association group, the, the house, housing colony group, welfare groups, then especially the serious senior citizen group, group. Different groups will be engaged through that, uh, the compassionate community care about the three principles which we have seen in uh, before, like the compassion, the community and care. The another concept which we use for engaging youth or the, uh, the, the community or the, the students for this activity. The science pain, science means without creating a community without uh, a, a pain uh, or students against needless suffering and pain. The students are engaging in different ways uh, to wipe out the pain or suffering of uh, fellow beings in their community. Uh, by their talents, by their uh, different involvement, by their social visit. We will be involving this youth or the student volunteers in our political activities. Students, future citizens are the backbone of the society we live in. If the right knowledge is imparted at the roots, they can change the face of needless suffering and pain. Through this concept, we are just trying to create a community with some sort of objectives like train the student volunteers to fight against needless suffering and pain, provide knowledge to students on how to utilize their time, knowledge, and talent, combat people with the suffering in their locality, building compassion towards people, and constantly serving for the reach of palliative care, identifying efficient groups and conducting awareness program. The, 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 through this sand Spain concept, we are engaging different uh, college youth or the school's children in this palliative care activities. Especially, uh, we have, as part of this concept, we have a, a set of activities like the awareness creation, fundraising, and like that. Anyway, we will be sharing the detailed concept note with you about this uh, uh, sand Spain concept. Empower the students in the resource mobilization for the needy with accountability. They will be conducting some sort of fundraising even in, in their uh, educational institutions. Or sometimes they may conduct some exhibitions or sometimes uh, they conduct some awareness rallies. Based on their availability and time, they will be conducting different activities in and around their college. Like we have conducted in this picture, we can see that we have conducted a cycle rally for creating awareness about palliative care in the community. Then another picture, 
one of the ns uh, the, we will be using different platforms for engaging student volunteers like the social service club in their college or school or the student police cadets especially in the kerala scenario we will be having some students police cadets uh, in their uh, like as part of their discipline we will be engaging students in their activities and another uh, platform which we use especially in college scenario the national service scheme nss to be called through that nss platform one of the school students has mobilized some uh, money and uh, bought a uh, ambulance for our palliative care activities sometimes they may visit our organization or they will be uh, collecting uh, some sort of uh, raw materials for our patients like the soap uh, rice and different different things they'll be collecting and distributing to our organization these are the some of the uh, activities they uh, are uh, conducting in their uh, educational institution especially like uh, they are also we are uh, trying to uh, implement some sort of projects like one of the major projects uh, we uh, introduced to in, uh, introduced in the school institute or the educational institution is one rupee one life they will be contributing one rupee a day and they will be collecting all those monies at the end of the month they will be distributing to the needy uh, or they will be satisfying the need of the beneficiaries outcome of involving community in palliative care especially improves the quality of life of patients and family members in all aspects like i have told that they will be when whenever and wherever we engage the community they will be getting physical relief social relief or the psychological relief or whenever they have some spiritual issues they will be getting a uh, uh, solution for that uh, spiritual issues with the support of community patient talents identification and presentation already i have told that we will try to identify the expertise or the the, the talents of patients through that uh, talent we will be engaging them in different manner like if they have some sort of drawing capacity or some sort of writing capacity we will be engaging them through that activity then self sustainability of the family through that vocational rehabilitation we will be trying to uh, provide some sort of financial support to that family through that we will be giving some sort of uh, 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 a financial support or sustainability of their uh, or uh, their income system we will be providing then social reunion already i told that when we connect the patient and family through the community uh, through their relatives or through their neighbors they will be if they have some sort of problems with their society that will be uh, clear through this uh, social reunion when we uh, engage volunteers or uh, the community they, sometimes they uh, they improve their dignity of life reducing social isolation through that social visit or the social uh, uh, the usage of social capital we can reduce the social isolation of the particular beneficiary of fund or awareness about government schemes and support we know that the central government or the state government is providing different sorts of or different types of other welfare schemes based on their need like the so the uh, old age pension cancer pension like the different 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 uh, welfare schemes are there we will be introducing that schemes to the family members or we will be facilitating all the schemes to that uh, that family member through the involvement of them aware awareness about palliative care through this involvement of palliative care the awareness may increase by conducting different uh, Uh, awareness program in that particular community optimal utilization of community resources then more people are contributing their strength for palliative care through this activities 
or by different concepts, we are trying to engage community for palliative care. It's a teamwork. Together, everyone achieves more. The team includes volunteers, social workers, nurses, doctors, physiotherapists, but all need training. That's why we are just trying to, uh, or we are going, going through this training program. We will be uh, watching a short movie about how the community are involving in this palliative care activities. We'll come back to you. Yeah, we'll be showing that. Through this video, you, you have received uh, more information about how the community is involving in palliative care activities. I hope that I'll be continuing with my presentation. When I is replaced by B, even illness becomes wellness. Through this community involvement, I have the I have some sort of limitations, but when I I am part of a group, I can contribute my thoughts, my ideas, my expertise for a uh, particular cause. That will create some sort of change in other people's life. Their illness may become uh, wellness. That is the uh, major chunk of or, or the uh, the major impact of community in palliative involvement of palliative, community in palliative care. Like a community-based palliative care services is essential a matrix of four elements. Like medical components are there, nursing components are there, sensitized the community, and the trained the community volunteers. Community mobilization applies to the way in which people can encourage and motivate to participate in program activities in order to mobilize the community successfully. It is important to identify where people's priorities lies and motivate them. The motivation became their uh, the involvement is one of the major uh, concern. We need to uh, encourage more people for these activities from our community. And through this involvement, you are just wiping out the, the tears of or the, the uh, struggles of the beneficiaries or their family members and creating some sort of smile on their face. With this, I am going to conclude my presentation. Uh, community involvement is very much needed in palliative care system. It is because it is the responsibility of our community to give care or uh, support to the, uh, the fellow beings in the community. Volunteers are also part of the multidisciplinary team who can contribute and uh, a, a support for the holistic care of the family or the beneficiaries. Thank you all. And I, I, before going for my another presentation, uh, I would like to listen from your uh, thoughts about involvement of palliative care, or if you have any questions about my presentations or my topics, you can ask now. And mm -hmm. otherwise, I will be calling uh, Mr. Vishnu, our state presentation coordinator, uh, for giving some sort of uh, knowledge about how you can involve in your idea like that. Thank you. You can ask questions now. Please raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask if you have any doubts or anything to be cleared from Mr. Babu, or you can put in your questions in your chat also. Yeah, 
please. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. I, I found all that really interesting. Um, the way that um, different, uh, you're harnessing so much expertise and activity from people. Yesterday, we uh, heard quite a lot about basic nursing care of patients. And I was thinking, oh dear, I'm not sure I could do that. But then there are other things that maybe I could do that other people and other people uh, don't mind washing people and sorting out difficult things like that. So thank you very much. That was um, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe, maybe just one more. Do you get, um, do you find uh, any resistance in the communities, or people who just don't want anything to, don't want to involve other people who want to be really private about their disease? Yeah, sometimes we have uh, some sort of uh, troubles uh, or the the reaction from the patients or the uh, beneficiary side. But we need to uh, protect their privacy. We need to take care of their uh, dignity. With that, we won't do anything uh, publicly. But we, especially whenever we give some sort of support to that beneficiary or the family members, it won't be published. But if someone uh, asks us to take their pictures while we give some sort of support, we'll be uh, getting their consent, then only we'll be uh, taking the picture. Then some sort of political interference also happening. The, the, one of the major agenda of one of the leading party in Kerala is to keep palliative care, care, not to, you know, to get some sort of voting or vote, vote for their uh, success. Yeah, that is also political interference also there will be there. Because we have a policy formed in 2008. Uh, with the, uh, uh, in that policy, they have clearly mentioned that every panchayat or every local system is supposed to have a palliative care a nurse, trained nurse or palliative care system in their locality. And if they are not in a position to manage their situation or the government system is not able to uh, provide a proper care, they can engage voluntary group in their in and around their area. The volunteer engagement or there we can utilize the expertise of other non-governmental organizations. That is the, uh, the major uh, the, uh, the highlights of that particular uh, policy of Kerala. Thank you. Yeah, ma thank you. Shall I hand over the mic to Vishnu for further information? Thank you, Babu, for yeah, thank, thank enlightening you. for your detailed discussions of palliative care and community. It has been very enlightening. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. And welcome, Vishnu. And I, please give your own details. I, I don't, I'm short of it, so you can give your details yourself. Yes, Vishnu, welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Babu, sir, for this opportunity. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good afternoon, good morning to, to those who are from other part of the world. So, my name is Vishnu, as introduced. Uh, I'm working as the regional coordinator for South of India region uh, here in Kerala, India. Especially, I'll be talking in the Indian context. Basically, I'm not going to take another session. Uh, we, uh, we are not good at talking. We basically focus more on the doing part. We are on the action side. So, uh, now that you people have known the basics of quality care, the myths of quality care, uh, basic communication, ecosystem. Now, I have seen a wonderful presentation of all of communication. So, now that you have a clear idea of uh, what is palliative care, now it's action time. So, let's see how uh, you could contribute as a volunteer, both in Indian context and uh, those who are from outside India. So, let me share, try to share my screen. Vaishnav, can you give me my sharing? Right? Open screen is visible. Yes. 
Okay, so I am working as part of the State Facilitation Division of Bal in India. Basically, State Facilitation Division is the, uh, primarily responsible for facilitating all those services, all the palliative services we provide here in Chilantran uh, through our flagship training facility, Chilantran Institute of Palliative Sciences. So, uh, basically, uh, State Facilitation Division is comprised of a very small team uh, headed by the division, headed by Shalini Arora. How are the other people not coming? No sound. Okay. Is now better? Better now? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Now it's better. It's kind of breaking. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here in the office. So, sorry. Okay. So, yeah. So, State Facilitation Division, uh, the division is set by Ms. Shalini Arora Joseph. We have very small team. Uh, basically, they uh, we are divided into four specific regions, North, Northeast, uh, Central, and Southern region. As I said, I am handling the Southern region. We'll more, see more in the details. So you have seen this uh, picture or slide many times. This is the Pallium India working model. On right hand side, you can see the demonstrate, educate, and facilitate model. Basically, we demonstrate in our uh, headquarters here in Trivandrum in Kerala. We demonstrate all the palliative care services. You can see the Trivandrum Institute of Palliative Science, the link centers, the OPDs, basically all the community engagement services, which Babusar has mentioned just now. All these things are basically we show it as we showcase it as a prototype, a proof of model. Uh, we show it as a model so that other stakeholders from other states in the country can uh, replicate this model. I won't say to exactly copy the model, but replicate this model according to the regional context in their region. So we try to demonstrate that here in our headquarters in Kerala. Uh, next, we try to educate uh, basically the public, medical professionals, and the policymakers. We try to create an awareness. Basically, we try to create a consciousness among the public what exactly is palliative care and what the role of, as Babu said, the role of volunteers here. Then we try to educate, uh, give training to medical professionals. Most often, we can see uh, medical doctors and nurses itself uh, has no uh, as a limited knowledge about the advanced uh, modern uh, domain of palliative care. And we try to uh, educate policymakers. Basically, uh, it's an irony. Uh, the government people are creating laws for us, especially in palliative care domain. But we used to uh, take sessions for them to award exactly is that law. So. That's the education part. And finally, the facilitation part is the division, which we do actually, we try to facilitate throughout the country. These are the main objectives. I'm not going to uh, get into the details due to the time constraints. We, one of the main objective of my division is to create at least one palliative care center in each district of our country. So this country, uh, as you all know, uh, India is a highly multicultural and multilingual country. So we have our regional challenges. So we, are trying to ensure a safe, equal, and quality access to palliative care service for all those in need. So facilitating new palliative care centers and services, integration of palliative care in all three levels of healthcare, from primary, secondary, tertiary, whether it's a, uh, a primary health center to a district hospital or an advanced multi-super-specialty -super hospital in that sense. Information and knowledge enhancement. One of the major challenges we face in palliative care domain as uh, state facilitators are the lack of either lack of information or incomplete misinformation among the public. So disseminating authentic information of palliative care is one of the core objective of SF state facilitation division. Then we collaborate with, as uh, Babasar said, we collaborate with the public and private stakeholders, opioid availability and legal framework workshops. So this is one of the major challenges in Indian context, uh, especially uh, opioid accessibility to medical professionals or the palliative care facilities are major challenge here. Uh, the government has a very strict regulation in opioid accessibility. So we conduct uh, various workshops in various states. We facilitate learning in medical institute, as I said, and community engagement and volunteer mobilization. Actually, this session is actually part of that part. These are more into how we facilitate those minute, minute details. Oh. Some, some areas volunteers can uh, support here. I'm not getting into the details. So as I said, we are divided into four specific regions. Each regional coordinator has assigned to one region. So this is the map of India and uh, our Northern regional coordinator, Mr. Rajendra Dadvajalwan, this is his number. And this much states, 12 states and UTs are assigned to him. So he is basically from Dehradun. He's from working from Dehradun. So if any of one, uh, any of you are from this region, this person will be the first point of contact. If you are interested, of, once your training is completed, if you are interested to work on any of the partners here in this area, 
you can contact him i'll share the numbers in the chat box so you can contact him uh, he'll be uh, helping you how to contribute on that part this is the northeastern region mr rondu sangma he is the uh, regional coordinator from northeast he is basically working from guwahati uh, these nine states are assigned to him including west bengal so basically we have categorized these states according to our internal assessment and operational efficiency central part coming to central part uh, sunanda ms sunanda samal uh, is the regional coordinator there she is working from pune uh, maharashtra these are the seven states assigned to her and south yes i am handling the southern part of india uh, eight states are assigned to me this is my number if any of any of you are from southern region i am your go to go person and if you are from outside india so those kind of advocacies and international collaborations are managed by our policy and strategic partnerships team ms smriti rana is the, uh, leading the uh, that division this is her number and email those who are from outside india you can directly connect with her she'll help you on various advocacies if you're planning any campaigns or any contribution any advocacy efforts you are uh, making as part of palim india as an organization or india as a country please connect with her she'll help you out so this is basically our palim india's national presence various palitic and palitic centers we have catalyzed or collaborated throughout these years uh, you have you can see the red star uh, two stars on uh, northern and northeastern part of india one is kacha cancer uh, center and other is from research institute from dehradun basically these hospital any patient visiting to this hospital they will be assessed on a pain scale to 1 to 10 10 being the highest so based on the pain assessment the patients are uh, being uh, treated there the triangular portion we have four palliative care training centers catalyst as you can see down south it's our tips facility uh, similar to tips we have catalyzed uh, three of three more centers in northern india all these green portion we have worked with around 20 nhms national health missions or the governments state governments for various collaborations we have conducted on on site foundation training due to covid now on site foundation training are on hold we have uh, hands on training partners due to covid we can only conduct like this we can only conduct virtual training after virtual training is completed our doctors nurses or volunteers like you people will connect to these partners in their region they can go to these centers they can get hands on exposure and decide how to uh, decide for yourself how to contribute on that centers uh, similarly if you go to this whole presentation will be shared to you so you can directly uh, click on that link palium india uh, palliative care center directory so if you go to a palium india website there is a whole list of palliative care centers in each state uh, so that you can identify which center which service you can connect and volunteer there so these are basically the name of centers which i have explained right now so this is basically a checklist for this with this slide i'll uh, conclude so basically uh, our chairman used to say every time volunteering should have an equal balance with compassion and competence uh, the very fact that you people are here for attending this training uh, itself is on proof that you people have a great amount of compassion uh, but equally uh, as a volunteer even though you are unpaid your efforts are not being appreciated to a great level still you people need to be responsible uh, for your actions and you people need to take a high amount of accountability for any projects you are associated to so just once this training is over just have a thought of the way the ways of volunteering whether you want to associate it with the existing partners which we have if you are interested you can get in touch with any of the regional coordinators we'll share the uh, we'll introduce you to those centers you can go visit that centers and decide for yourself which type of volunteering you could take second list of course the time you at the end of the day we all have a a uh, family to take care of we are working we are studying so you need to decide for yourself which how much time you can invest even though two hours a week or one hour per month you have to give a dedicated and exclusive time for your volunteering third thing use utilize your your existing skills if you are good at accounts if you are studying commerce try to uh, volunteer with the with your uh, in your region try to connect with palliative care centers in region do an accounts bookkeeping at least in a weekend basis we have volunteers doing in northern part of india so you you decide for yourself you know you really know uh, where you are good at which thing you are good at and which thing you are not good at so you utilize that existing skills try to contribute on that basis 
uh, then engage with the region specific palliative care network. So we have this WhatsApp groups and FB groups of state specific palliative care centers. Once you are enrolled into these, any of these palliative care centers, we will add you to that group so that you will be aware of what are the palliative care efforts going on in your region, uh, how you can contribute in other palliative care centers also. Finally, uh, just spread the word. We need more and more people to contribute on this uh, greater cause of palliative care. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you all for the patient listening. I'll share the uh, contact details in the chat. Uh, thank you, Professor. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishnu. And we have already shared the contact information of uh, state presentation team in our WhatsApp group. You can utilize that. Anyway, we'll be, as said by Vishnu, we'll be sharing all these presentations uh, after the training program. You'll, you can utilize these informations for your uh, personal engagement. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishnu, for your crowning session with, the, with your input. It was really very useful. Like uh, these, these inputs are which are really needed. Vishnu, you are muted if you are talking. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, it has been a great session. And uh, thanks for each one of you who actively participated, and especially for uh, Reverend John, Joe, Harvey, and Chami, uh, and Bhavna, who took uh, initiative for your group discussions and you shared all the details. And there's a saying which says, many are called and few are chosen. There were 104 people who registered for this program, but only 67 joined in, and the number varied by day. And they were also not constant, and maybe they had some emergency and their priorities were different, and that is why which prevented them from participating. However, for all those who sincerely and ardently participated, you will surely agree with me, all these, these seven and a half our program is all was, was worth every minute of it and not really sufficient i would say to cover such a vast topic isn't it yes and may the light the fire which of fire of compassion and care which was kindled in your heart by these seven and a half hours program may come a glow in your place wherever you are let your light shine in your community through the palliative care and be united thank you all take care Thank you. Thank you.